Good evening, I'm Patricia Vallone with a CTV News Update. WSSC Water files a lawsuit against companies polluting the environment with forever chemicals. The chemicals, commonly known as PFAS, are compounds that don't easily break down and end up in drinking water supplies and wastewater. The lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court of Maryland was brought against nearly 20 companies that make fire suppression foams. We filed a lawsuit on Friday against chemical manufacturers of this fire suppressing foam, which contains known toxic chemicals to make sure that they are accountable for the pollution that they are causing to our water supplies and making sure that any treatment changes that we have to make to ensure the safety and quality of our water is not passed on to our customers. They put it in the environment, then they put it in the water supply, they should be responsible for any changes that we have to make to get it out of the water before sending it to our customers. And state and local governments across the country have also filed similar lawsuits against companies such as 3M and DuPont. Meantime, a WSSC water employee is caught on camera allegedly racially profiling a contractor. The employee, a meter reader, threatens Jose Gomez, who was contracted by a Capitol Heights resident. She appears to become upset because debris is in her way and asks the contractor to immediately remove a pile of branches. When Gomez says he'll get to it, the employee becomes enraged and starts yelling racial slurs and threatens to have him deported. WSSC released a statement saying that type of behavior has no place in its organization and that an internal investigation is underway. A Clinton man has been arrested and charged with murdering his wife. Early Saturday morning, Prince George's police responded to a domestic disturbance call just after midnight in the 10,000 block of Wisteria Way. When they arrived, they found 31-year-old Sheree Gray suffering from trauma she was pronounced dead on the scene. Her husband, 39-year-old Richard Gray, was arrested on the scene and is being charged with first-degree murder and other related charges. Police believe Gray killed his wife during an argument. And watch out for severe weather later this evening. A weather alert has been issued for the Chesapeake Bay region and the DMV area. Severe thunderstorms are possible with threats of damaging winds, tornadoes, hail and flooding are also possible. Well, last night, Beyonce brought on a night to remember despite the severe weather. This was the second night of her Renaissance World Tour at FedEx Field. More than 60,000 concert goers were under a shelter in place order due to lightning in the area. The order was held for nearly two hours before people could return to their seats for the show to begin. This caused the concert to end later than expected. Luckily, the tour covered $100,000 to keep Metro's lines open for an extra hour early Monday morning. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Coming up, we are back with another segment of Grow With Us. CTV's Byron Scott will have the details ahead. Stay with us. One smile is great. But one smile in a community of smiles is so much better. Smile Train celebrates the cleft lip and palate community by empowering medical professionals in over 70 countries to perform essential cleft care in their local communities. Smile Train, changing the world one smile at a time. Welcome back. A county teenager faces charges following a shooting in Glendale over the weekend. The suspect is a 17-year-old boy from Mount Rainier. Officers were called to the 9900 block of Margarita Avenue on Saturday. According to investigators, a man, apparently a retired police officer, found a car that was stolen from a family member. Police say the man shot the teen who was armed during a confrontation. The adult provided aid to the teen who faces multiple handgun and theft of a vehicle charges. And a teenager faces charges after bringing a loaded gun onto school grounds during summer classes. The suspect has been identified as a 16-year-old student. County police say during a fight at Largo High School last Friday, several students saw the suspect with a gun. Authorities were alerted and the student was taken into custody. The suspect faces multiple weapons charges. 
The Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments launches a new campaign to tackle air pollution. It's called the Turn Your Engine Off campaign. The initiative is designed to educate commercial truck and motor coaches about idling regulations in the DMV. Here in Maryland, commercial vehicles that are caught idling for more than five minutes can face a hefty $500 fine. Officials say idling vehicles can contribute to poor air quality. And when a vehicle is, Id is idling, it emits air pollutants. And especially during the summer months, those air pollutants can react in heat and sunlight and they can create ozone, which is, is the kind of main pollutant of concern in our area. And the campaign will last through Sunday, August 20th. For more details, you can visit the website on your screen. And we are back tonight with our home gardening segment, Grow With Us, with Kevin Alsap. Tonight, we are taking part in a harvest earlier in the season. Alsap showed us how to plant potatoes, and now they're ready. And we're back with another segment of Grow With Us with Kevin Alsop of Nemas Garden. And today is harvest time. Take a look down here. These are potatoes that we planted back in the springtime. And late, talk about late winter, late, late winter springtime, early winter. spring. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, what kind of potatoes in here and how you cared for them. All right, so we got a variety of potatoes in here, white, yellow, and red. We won't really know what they are until we pull them out the ground, okay. which is good. So, I mean, we regularly watered them. It depends, you know, what time of year it was. The cooler, we didn't water as much. Now it's getting John Blaze hot. We might have watered a little bit more. Um, about every four weeks, we hit it with some potassium, some um, potassium to uh, help fertilize the, the potatoes. How do you know when it's time to water then? Because there are different conditions, different soils, different weather. How do you know when it's time to add some water? Well, you better touch your soil. Touch your soil. If your soil is dry down to maybe uh, an inch or something, then you know you definitely need to water. You want to water it low at the root zone. You see you have, can just imagine if this was all up in a canopy like this. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your nozzle low so the water goes directly into the soil. You want to stay away from wetting the leaves as much as possible because all you're doing is wetting the leaves and the leaves are for photosynthesis from the sun. That's okay. where they get their energy at. How do you know it's time to harvest them? I know some of these have brown leaves. Is that an indication that when it's time to pull them up? It's a good indication that it's time to pull them up. Uh, these are, they're not dealing with any disease. So, and they're, they're falling over. So that's saying there's no more energy really going into this plant. Mm -hmm. So they're falling over. Most of the energy is in, in, in the potato. Let's begin to harvest. We've got about a minute and a half left here. Okay, all right. So when you harvest, uh, if you're gonna use a tool or a rake or anything like that or a hand tool, you have to be very careful because you don't want to damage the potatoes. So as you see, I'm moving uh, soil away very slowly in search of some potatoes. And I already see some, look, these bad boys are ready to, <laughs> they ready to be replanted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They are already chitting. Chitting means what? Um, that's when these roots come out like that. So if you were to prepare these before planting, you can let the roots, the eyes come out of the, out of it and- You can plant that and get more-, more Yeah, you can plant, plant that, plant those potatoes. And that's what I encourage people to do. If you have any questions for Allsap, you can email him at the address on your screen. Well, a quick reminder to apply for the elderly property tax credit. This new tax incentive gives older homeowners up to a 20 percent credit on county property taxes for up to five years. To be eligible, homeowners must be 65 years old or older and have lived in their home for at least 10 consecutive years. The value of the home must also not exceed $500,000. To receive your credit this year, apply by October 1st. And to apply online, visit propertytaxcredit.princegeorgescountymd.gov. And you're watching CTV News Still Ahead, Simon Bugs with your Monday Sports Page Report. What's going on sports fans and coming up in a bit, Bowie Bay Sox players Carlos Tavera and Dante Williams speak on how they can improve to make it to the major leagues and Commanders wide receiver De'Ami Brown touches on his growth since he's been in the NFL. Stay tuned.
Thanks for staying with us. Well, a Clinton man is dead following a Sunday morning car crash. Around 8.30 a.m., police responded to Raintree Way and Goblet Way in Clinton for a single car collision. On the scene, they found 67-year-old John Perry unresponsive, and he was, and soon he was pronounced dead after. Now, police say Perry was attempting to make a left turn, and when his vehicle left the road, it struck a tree. Well, the state is trying to go more green when it comes to housing. The Maryland Green and Healthy Task Force aims to advance green and healthy housing for low-income households. This includes developing policy recommendations to eliminate barriers to affordable, energy-efficient, and low-emission housing. The task force will meet quarterly for three years and report its findings to various government officials. The first meeting will be held tomorrow, August 8th at 3 p.m. It'll be virtual, and you can visit the online meeting at the website on your screen. Okay, everybody, it's time for your Monday sports page. We'll start with some minor league baseball. Making it to the MLB isn't easy. It can take years to get called up to the major leagues. Richard Carlos Tavera and outfielder Dante Williams were both taken by the Baltimore Orioles in the 2021 amateur draft. And since then, they made it up to the Orioles minor league affiliate, the Bowie Bay Sox. I spoke with Tavera and Williams recently, and they told me how they can improve to make it to the majors. Consistency, just being consistent, uh, playing defense how I played, and just uh, not not being an easy out. Just every time I step in the box, just uh, it's me and the pitcher in the box. So uh, doing whatever I can to get on base, whatever I can to help the the team win, call the abs, whatever aspect that is, just being the best version of myself. So um, whatever that whatever that is, uh, just giving that 100 percent and doing that every single day. Yeah, one thing, one big focus is again throwing strikes and attacking hitters. Um, um, you know, my stuff is really good when I'm in zone, and um, I trust my stuff. It's just about, you know, locating it well and uh, I'm really learning how to get those really good guys out. You can catch the Bay Sox in action tomorrow as they go up against the Richmond Flying Squirrels at 635. Moving on to the Washington Commanders, wide receiver Deami Brown is going into his third year in the league. And despite not being in the league that long, the University of North Carolina product says he's grown a lot since being drafted. I definitely did like a whole lot of self-reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, had to... Uh, figure out some things that I had to do, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Just put, really point the finger at myself, you know, mm -hmm. the things that I didn't do, things that I can work on, you know, and, and I had some help from some other guys, you know, mm -hmm. just to build build me up, you know, because they've been in the league for a couple of years. So, you know, it's always good to get experience from them. For a guy like Terry, uh, mm -hmm. I had Fitzpatrick for a little bit, you know, learned a little bit from him. Then you got uh, Heineke, Carson Wentz, and all those other guys, you know, Logan, Logan Thomas, you know, you got guys that you can learn from mm -hmm. that have been in the league for five plus years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think they pretty much just helped me and they, they helped me see the business side as well. Braun is also expecting big things from this offense in 2023. This will be way more explosive than we have been. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with EB coming in, he coaches us hard and, you know, and he has a whole lot of passion for it and, and he won't let us slack at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, so you expect big things when, when it comes from a coach like that to bring mm -hmm. that energy. You know, it just pushes us to be even more better. The Commanders will play their first preseason game against the Cleveland Browns on Friday. And that is your Monday sports page. Simon Bugs, CTV Sports. And that wraps up our CTV news update. Join us again tomorrow at 4.30. Have a great night.